So rainy season still has not yet come. Normally, we would have started rainy season by now. We started hurricane season a few weeks ago, so we should be getting rain now, but it's been, it's been a few weeks since we last had a rain, which is not good. I mean, we're fine, we're doing okay. We still have some grass. As you can see, the grass is kind of brown right now. That'll bounce back as soon as the rain hits, thankfully, but our pond is not so happy right now. So you can kind of see where the moisture level is. So see kind of that line, that's where the water table is. But because it's so hot, we've lost more than half of our water. It's, it's dried out so much. I'm hoping that the one positive is that because it's dried out so much that maybe we can get in there and get those roots ripped out. Probably gonna try and do that today. Only reason we haven't done that yet is because the, um, I think they call it a backhoe, the excavator. The excavator's not here anymore, so we can't just reach in and scoop it out. We've gotta go in with a skid steer or try and hook it up to our toe strap to the back of our truck. And with the skid steer, you risk going in and then you can't rec then you got to recover the skid steer so you don't want that to happen but they've made this all nice and clean it's looking really nice the grass is already starting to grow back in which will be good because that'll kind of prevent erosion from happening but hopefully when rainy season kicks in this will be where the majority of our water that floods the pasture will go hopefully that's how it's supposed to work today we're bringing out the guy who did our house pad where is it it's right there yeah so we're bringing the guy who did our house pad back out and we're gonna do a lot of clearing on the property today and leveling the garden. This is gonna kind of be complicated because I didn't want to, we're trying to not put out any more money on soil. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna try and see if we can source some soil, some topsoil from our property to try and fill in those swales in the garden area. I already know some areas where we might be able to get some to fill it in. We're also gonna be kind of uh, digging, not necessarily a trench, but we are gonna be placing kind of a swale around the back of the garden to kind of divert the water around it instead of through it. But I'm also really excited because he is actually gonna be ripping out a lot of the invasive Brazilian peppers on our property, which is gonna clean it up a lot. One of the areas that we are specifically targeting today, aside from the garden area, is actually this area back here. So back here, there is a bunch of Brazilian peppers that have just completely taken over our creek, dry ditch, dry creek, I'm calling it dry creek, but they have completely taken over and we're gonna get them all cleared out so that we can approve the drainage through here because the water flows through our property and it does not drain as efficiently because of all of this vegetation uh, kind of hindering it. So we're gonna get all of this cleared out, get these Brazilian peppers cleared out and look, you can kind of see in here all of this vegetation that is just, it's super dense. It's kind of taken over down here. It's, it's really bad. So we're gonna get in here. He's gonna clear a lot of this stuff out so that it can drain better. And there's also some Brazilian pepper in the, uh, in the uh, wooded area on the property. We're gonna get that cleared out. I'm actually gonna be making a trip up further north of us to go visit our tree guy and we're gonna actually get some more fruit trees. He, whenever we ordered some fruit trees for Mother's Day, there was a few that we had wanted but he didn't have in stock and now he has them in stock. So basically we're gonna get two varieties of peach trees to replace the two peach trees that we had lost. And we're gonna get two uh, Scarlet Beauty plums, which is supposed to be more like a true plum, which is awesome that we could have that down here in Florida. And then probably in a month, we found someone that is selling 
the varieties of apples that we were growing and we're probably gonna get three of them. One to put right next to the silky coop to kind of have like a symmetrical two apple trees on either side of the silky coop. And then also two fruit trees for the uh, orchard because they do better. Well, you need them to pollinate each other, of course, but they, um, well, actually, I don't even know. Because our one apple tree that we have is multiple apple trees grafted onto one rootstock. So it can pollinate, it can be self-pollinating, but Obviously, the more apples you have, the better pollination rate you're gonna get, the greater chances you're gonna have of getting apples. Yes, we are removing a lot of stuff out of here, but the stuff that we're removing is extremely invasive, and South Florida Water Management would actually require us to remove it and maintain it, and if we don't remove it mechanically, they're gonna make us spray glyphosate on it, which, I do not want to do. I, I will do everything I can to avoid having to do that. So I did speak with um, them and they said that we could do a mechanical removal of a lot of these invasives because we have to maintain it. And I, like I said, I do not want to spray glyphosate on our property, especially not this area where it is uh, technically wetlands where the water sits and drains down into our aquifers. I do not want to risk that. So, and some people might say, oh, but it doesn't affect it. I'm not gonna argue with that today. Unfortunately, we are seeing the amount of cancer spiking in the last 50 to 60 years since the beginning of use of these kinds of chemicals. And while I can't say whether or not 100% it is the cause. I still feel like it is a very strong contributor. There's a lot of evidence backing it up. A lot of these chemicals that we use in America are banned in other countries. So I'm just gonna play it the safe route and mechanically remove them. So our guy got out here and he's already starting on leveling the garden area. He's scraping up the topsoil right now. So why don't I go ahead and set him on a time lapse? So here's the garden. So we got it all raised up and leveled off. Then right here, so we got the apple tree and then kind of center here, I'll show you guys center. I'm standing in the garden right now, but picture down the center, there's one apple tree, there's gonna be another apple tree and then down the center is gonna be our Silky's new coop. We'll have garden bed there, garden bed there ultimately but that's kind of what we're gonna do. He raised it up a bit so that there is, so it's it's kind of like its own little pad. So we can do that with the silkies, build the coop. Oh my goodness. We didn't get as, we, didn't, we were a little ambitious today. Didn't get everything done, but we got a lot done and I'm really happy. Take you guys out to the wetlands right quick. There's still more to do in the wetlands, but we got a lot of the invasives out today. We gotta burn them so that they are gone and cleared up, but ripped out a lot of pepper bushes. So those are, it's, there's a lot more room in here and I'm really excited because without those pepper bushes and some of the other invasives gone, it's gonna open up the ground to the sun and we're gonna get grass. So there was a stump here in the middle of this meadow. You guys might've seen that there was a stump here. Ripped that out. This is our pile of invasives that are gonna get burned. But look at this. There was a big, huge clump. There was like three clusters of trees there that got taken over by Ligodium, ripped them out so that they are gone. Clean this up a bit. There was a big patch of Brazilian pepper here as well. Oh my goodness. That's gonna open up the ground to a lot of sun. He's still gonna come back. We still got more stuff to rip up. He had to go, unfortunately. But we're gonna clear out a lot of these invasives and allow the ground to grow grass, probably, because um, it's already growing a lot of bahia. And I think some sort of uh, St. Augustine, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on types of grasses, we'll see. But we still wanna kind of get in here in this dense area where there's a bunch of trees get in here and kind of 
thin it out, not rip every tree out, just kind of thin out some of the smaller trees that had sprouted up from dropped seeds, just to give the other trees room to breathe, let some more sunlight in there, encourage more grass growth. So now that we've got that garden area situation taken care of though, I can start working on planting the garden again.